Good evening. I'd like to call to order the town meeting, Emmitsburg Town Meeting of Monday, June 5th, 2023 at 7 o'clock p.m. I'd ask that everybody please silence all phones and electronic devices at this time. Future meetings, um, we have a Board of Commissioners meeting on Monday, July 10th. Is that Monday? Pledge of Allegiance? Sorry about that, folks. I got ahead of myself there. Um, let's begin with the Pledge of, Alleg Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry for the rocky start there. I'd like to add before anything that Commissioner O'Donnell is absent this evening with prior notice. Hence, I'm running the meeting, so I apologize in advance. We have a Board of Commissioners meeting scheduled for Monday. Is that Monday, Ms. Willits? Yes, it is. Monday, July 10th, 2023, at 7 p.m. at the town office and via Zoom. Also, um, just to let everybody know that there is a Planning Commission meeting scheduled for Tuesday, June 27th, 2023, at 7 p.m. here at the town office and via Zoom. At this moment, I'd like to look at the meeting minutes from both May 1st and May 15th. Hopefully everybody had a chance to review those. Did anybody have any modifications to those minutes? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes as presented? I make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for May 1st and May 15th. Okay. The motion's been made by Commissioner Sweeney, seconded by Commissioner Davis. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries four to zero by Commissioner Bowman Pollitt, Commissioner Davis, Commissioner Sweeney, and Commissioner Ritz, with Commissioner O'Donnell absent. Good. Sorry about this. <laughs> now we turn to the deputies for the police report. Good evening. I'm Deputy Bartha, for those you don't know. Before I start, uh, this is uh, Deputy Thomas. So uh, currently right now, Deputy Honaker is out on FMLA. Um, so He's uh, Deputy Thomas is going to be our uh, temporary guy for at least the time being until Deputy Honaker comes in. So just wanted to see everybody get familiar with his face because he'll be around a while. All right, starting off. Um, so uh, holiday leave had two days, uh, sick leave 11, a lot of that being uh, Deputy Honaker, like I just discussed. Um, temporary transfer of um, Deputy Thomas. Uh, no training this month. No fleet issues this month for productivity. Uh, calls for service had 362 calls for service, which includes two arrests, 48 traffic stops. Um, and then you can see the note at the bottom. Other than that, that concludes uh, May for the uh, monthly report. Any questions? Mr. Ruben Pollitt? Yes. With um, summer coming upon us, I didn't know if there um, was ever an opportunity for a presence along the disc golf course as it works its way back into the woods by any chance? You mean back here at the park? All the way down to like where the uh, stream is at mm -hmm. the very back of the woods. So I mean, I make, uh, both of us make frequent walks. Um, so we'll open walking patrol cards and I'll just walk the path and stuff like that. And I've, I've been back there several times. Okay. Um, but I mean, if there is there any specific time the, that it's more important to focus on, it's I, more busy? I think with summer coming, um, we're going to see a lot of activity back there based okay. on what I've noticed on my walk. So it might be just worth a little peek okay. every now and then. We'll take note of that and, and take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none. Thank you. Any questions for Deputy Thomas here? Mm. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. Uh, if I may, I got the scores that I got my information all. Or you gave me one. Already. I got one. I don't have one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for that. All right, now we'll turn to um, Ms. Bullets for the town manager's report. 
Good evening. This is the town manager's report for April. I'm going to highlight some of the key areas related to streets, uh, staff cold patched the sewer line ditch on First Avenue. They also marked the sewer and water lines on DePaul Street for the new water line project. Uh, they assisted with the collection of the parking meter money. Uh, related to parks, they've power washed the pavilions and painted some of the pic picnic tables in Memorial Park. They filled in the ruts along Ball Park Road to ball field number three, seated and mulched also. Uh, they worked at the pool, um, putting sinks, urinals, toilets, et cetera, back together prior to the inspection. Um, I'm happy to say our inspection uh, for the pool passed with not a single thing that needed to be done or repaired. So that was kudos to the staff for getting ready for that. Uh, related to water, Rainbow Lake is still at the spillway level of 16.6 feet. Um, however, as everybody knows, we do need rain. Um, there's our well depths. Uh, water production and consumption, we produced an average of 259,555 gallons and consumed an average of 272,150 gallons uh, per day. Uh, the amount of backwasher in the month of April is approximately 14.03%. We purchased 352,500 gallons of water from Mount St. Mary's. For wastewater, we treated an average of 432,733 gallons, and again, consumed 272,150 gallons per day, which meant that approximately 37.11% of the wastewater treated uh, in April was wild water. We had no spills of untreated sewage in the month of March. We did exceed the de plant's design capacity three times. We received 5.49 inches of rain in April. And at the time of this report, we had a surplus of 3.16 inches over the last six months. Trash pickup will remain on Mondays in the month of June. I highlighted some of the meetings I attended in April. Just a few noteworthy items. Uh, staff flushed hydrants around town. We um, had a very successful hydrant flushing. We did not receive any discolored water complaints. Uh, staff and the contractor located and repaired a large leak on the Mount St. Mary's uh, main water line on Annandale Road, uh, estimated loss of about 945,000 gallons. The contractor replaced our LG Sonic sensors and prepared the unit to be placed into the lake. Our water and sewer staff supervisors attended a cybersecurity class for the water treatment plant and the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the staff assisted the contractor with the repair of the meter at the Seton Village uh, meter vault, and they worked with the contractor on the replacement of the sewer service line in Emmett Gardens. Uh, two just quick announcements. Uh, tentatively on June 15th at 4.30 a.m., staff's gonna come in and shut uh, the town water off to the entire town at the uh, pressure reducing valve on Fraley at Fraley and Annandale Road to check for the le any leaks on the line coming down the mountain. Um, water should probably be off anywhere between five and 30 minutes. We will send out an alert, post it on website and Facebook um, as we get a little closer to the date. And as of right now, we're tentatively planning on sewer relining on DePaul Street the week. It's tentative. We're waiting on the contractor the week of June 19th. And again, we will send out alerts and, and post the announcements uh, in all appropriate places. And that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Welch. Are there any questions from the commissioners for the town manager's report? Commissioner Bowman Pollitt? I don't have a question, but I just wanted to thank town staff because I know that that little wooden partition in the parking mm -hmm. lot it has been put up and it looks really nice and I didn't expect it to go up so fast. So right. thank you. Please extend my- I question. will, definitely. I have two questions myself, Ms. Willits. Uh, one, and you might not have this information this evening so we can follow up tomorrow, but um, the patching schedule for streets in town mm -hmm. was brought to my attention that on Irish Town Court mm -hmm. near the mailbox, there's some um, issues with the, with the road there. So wondering what, um, if that could be looked at or if that's going to be on the schedule soon for, for repair. Uh, I can tell you it's not on the schedule um, as of right now. I'll uh, I'll uh, have staff go out and look at it tomorrow. Okay. And that said, at the same along the same um, Irish Town Court, there the sidewalks appear to be an issue with the sidewalks breaking up and a six inch, approximately a six inch drop 
at one spot along that um, concern for safety. Okay, I'll let them know also. Thank you. And then it was brought to my attention too, and I don't know if you um, as well, it's kind of, it's not my kind of sound kind of silly. Um, have we looked at, or has anyone discussed with you using sheep in the solar fields for milling purposes? So I was contacted several months ago by an organization working sheeps or something along those lines about um, it's a program where they work with solar fields and they partner with solar field companies to have the sheep come in and graze and essentially take care of the grass and mow it, not mow it down, but eat it down. And it's supposed to be really good for the environment. Um, I put them in touch with UGI who leases land at the wastewater treatment plant for our solar fields. I was just informed on Friday that there are in fact sheep on the solar field right now, and they're going to be there for about two weeks. Okay. Um, I just have an email into them saying, Hey, next time, uh, can you let us know? Cause it's town property, even though UGI is leasing it. So, okay. Yes, they're there. Thank you. Okay. That's all I had. Anyone else? No. All right, thank you. I guess um, I see Ms. Shaw's here. If you, are you going to address the grants administrator report? Fantastic, thank you. Good evening, I'm going to highlight some items from the grants administrator report. Um, for the restroom concession stand that's going to be going into the south of my, Eugene Myers Community Park, the electrical conduit was installed last month and we're going to be bringing an RFP to the board, hopefully in the next two months or so, um, for a project manager that'll coordinate the building delivery for the prefab building and water and sewer hookup. Um, the pump station, we just got all the signed contracts back from the construction company the board approved last month. So we're hoping to break ground in the next month or two once we get approval from the USDA. Um, the speed trailers were delivered um, and you might see those around town, they're portable speed trailers and they'll just let um, residents know or people passing through town, how fast they're going. Um, and then we have two newly awarded grants, which is the trip advertising grant um, that does not include the billboard. So that'll just be to place um, Emmitsburg as a tourist destination and two annual publications next year. And that is actually for 3,335. And then we also got, um, for being a Main Street affiliate community, we got 10,000 um, from the state, or excuse me, from Frederick County, and that's going to be to get some new welcome to Emmitsburg signs. Um, and then for upcoming grants, I just wanted to highlight one that's on the agenda tonight. It's the Community Development Block Grant. Um, that grant will be for $552,500. Um, and that's going to be for the DePaul Street water line. And that's due tomorrow, or excuse me, Wednesday. Um, is there any questions? Mr. Roman Pollitt? You said the speed cameras came in. Did I hear you correct on that? Um, speed trailers. Speed trailers, yes. Is there one up by Irish Town Road by any chance? I do not believe they're deployed yet. Uh, we're waiting on, I believe, a representative to... Uh, walk us through on operation and and things of that nature and then once they get that then we're going to deploy them and irish town will be uh first on the list thank you any other questions thank you michelle now we turn to the town planner for her report oh okay <laughs> throwing us off there all right, got to lower it down. Okay. Good evening. I'm going to go over the plan town planners report um, for MS4. We've been trying to follow the operations and maintenance plan that was um, created by Barton and LaJudas to help take over the maintenance activities for the next five years. Um, also have been in touch with uh, the Flat Run Community Association's president and two residents uh, to hear about their concerns regarding the stormwater basin. So now we're trying to find contractors to take over um, the complex maintenance activities. And an RFP was posted at the beginning of this month uh, with a due date of June 16th. Um, for code enforcement um, and permits, we, 
processed seven um, zoning permit applications, one backyard chicken and two uh, street closure permits. Um, just want to note that uh, one of the zoning permit applications was for McDonald's to install their second drive through lane and um, issued six high hazard uh, and six low hazard cross connection permits. Um, so uh, the planning commission met on May 22nd to discuss the comprehensive plan. And um, like uh, Commissioner Ritz said, it's the next meeting will be on June 27th, 2023. Um, some development updates, uh, federal stones uh, site plan and improvement plans have been satisfied uh, or like all the engineering comments have been satisfied. Um, the developer has also submitted engineering estimates for public improvements. So the remaining items include a public works agreement, uh, surety and um, zoning permit for, um, Okay, uh, Village Liquors or Silo Plaza, sorry about the wrong title there. Um, the improvement plan and the site plan have been approved um, and we're waiting for the engineering estimates uh, that's needed to uh, calculate the bonding. Um, also, instead of um, MS or Massey and Mary E-Wing, e that should say Seton Shrine Museum entrance. And um, the site plan for that was received on May 26th and it's under review. Um, additionally, we've had multiple companies interested in moving their businesses to the industrial zone, including a mulch company and a distillery. Um, and for comprehensive plan, a uh, new dashboard, including the proposed timeline for completing the comprehensive plan, it's been added to the website and Red News Post has also written, up, or written an article about it. And uh, we're planning public engagement activities while we draft the first um, couple of chapters of the comprehensive plan. And uh, and we're also working on the next, or the text amendment, um, econ economic development flex district floating zone, which if passed would allow the town to approve a zoning map amendment to create a district that would add more flexibility in terms of zoning. So. Great, thank you. Um, anyone have any questions? I have one. And this might be for you, maybe Ms. Willis can um, answer this as well. Back in October, we had an agenda item regarding open space in Brookfield. Uh, it was like a standing item we had on our agenda for a time, and then it was postponed, postponed, and then it kind of went away. I just wanted to know if there was any updates on that, or um, and if so, when will we see that next? So just real quick, the mayor and I have had a meeting with uh, Scott Frager from Brookfield um, about the open space lots and there's some things that need to be worked through. So okay. I, don't, I don't have a timeline for when it will be coming back. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now we'll turn to the commissioners for their comments. Uh, Commissioner Bowman Pollitt. Um, you can tell summer's upon us because there's a whole bunch of activities going on. Uh, Mother Seton's carnival came back and there was a large community support that turned out for that, all different organizations and volunteers. Uh, I think a good time was had by everybody who stopped by. So if you're listening and you were one of those volunteers and you're there helping, thank you so much for your support. We had a lot going on this past weekend too. We had bake sales that were, um, helping our local community, as well as the library's summer reading kickoff. So kiddos with school outs, uh, you can get rewarded for your reading. And that leads right into Thursday at seven o'clock at the library, you can read with dogs and it's amazing. And I encourage all of you, adult or children to partake so that they keep coming to our library. And then um, the friends of the library had a very successful book sale that goes to support the library programs as well. Um, and there were a lot of goodies to be had at a very generous um, price. So it was, it was nice to see the community coming together and having a good time and working together for the benefit of the, of the town. Thank you. Commissioner Davis. Um, just a couple of things. Thanks, Taya. Heard a lot of good comments about the tree trimming and the new flower bed design on the 
Times Square, a lot of people were very, very happy and complimentary of that. Um, community garden, that's the thing too, it's, it's growing every day and, and that's great. And there seems to be a lot of activity down there with, with that. And we'll, we'll keep bringing you water. We'll, we'll get to the, it's not coming out of town since about this. But we're uh, we're taking care of that, and uh, uh, the baseball parks, like I say, are going to be full for the next couple of weeks. We have a lot of people in town, a lot of tournaments, and and that's a good thing because the businesses are are really uh, uh, booming. So that's all I got. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Sweeney. Uh, yeah, I want to reiterate that the that this this past weekend when the parks was full, we had a couple hundred children playing baseball and then we also had a disc golf tournament going on at the same time in the park the parks were completely full the swimming pool was open so that uh, the whole the whole parks are being used so they'll be used this weekend too there's another big tournament this weekend so um be on alert for children they'll be crossing the roads and everything because they have to park wherever we can find parking for them uh, the Heritage Day will be coming up at the end of the month. The Lions Club, we appreciate everybody coming out and bringing your families and enjoy the day. It is the last Saturday of the month, June the 24th, I believe it is. Um, I will be stepping down as, as Lions Club president this year. This will be my last year for president of the Lions Club. So I need a break. <laughs> but please come out and enjoy all the stuff. And... Um, if you want to be in a parade or anything, you have to sign your parade certificates and hand it back in. I think I got everything else. The concession stand at the swimming pool will be opened up as soon as I get finished with the little league concession stands, which will be this weekend. So we'll open up the concession stand at the swimming pool um, the third week of, of June. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sweeney. Um, I have a few things. I jotted some stuff down, so sorry if I read off my notes here. First, I wanted to congratulate all of our local graduates. Um, I wish you all the best in your continuing continuing educations or employment opportunities and hope that all of your dreams for the future come true. I'd also like to congratulate our many successful Catoctin Spring sports teams. Uh, you make this alumnus very proud with all the accomplishments you achieved this season. And finally, after giving it some thought for several months, I have decided to not seek a fourth term as Emmitsburg Town Commissioner. I first ran for office in 2014 because I wanted to give back to the community in which I grew up. And I felt then that the time was right. While I've enjoyed representing you these past nine years by listening to your questions and concerns and acting upon them, I feel now is the time to step down. I chose to make this announcement here tonight to be transparent and to give ample notice of my intentions. My hope is that whoever replaces me is like me, that they do not have a self-serving agenda and that they have the best interest of Emmitsburg at heart, willing to serve with the goal of making our community better. I know you're out there and I hope you accept the challenge. In addition to the commissioner's seat currently occupied by me, the office of mayor is also up for election this year. The last day to file for office is August 25th by 4 p.m. And if you have any questions regarding the election, please don't hesitate to contact Ms. Sabrina King, our town clerk. Thank you. Now we have public comment and I see that we have two individuals signed up. Um, at You've got mayor. Oh, shoot. I am so sorry, Mr. Mayor. See, I told you I'm a little sloppy, but um, You're too big um, to get rid of me. Please. <laughs> no. <laughs> the floor is yours. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, but, uh, thank you for your service. It's been very poignant and uh, barbed at times, but uh, that, that's, that's that's the function to poke the bear. If you're anybody out there, uh, any of the elected officials, we're responsible for everything. Staff only does what we ask them to do. <laughs> This gentleman back here, you're a county commissioner, right? Would you please stand up and come up here for, can me come up for a minute? Yes, I actually, that's when I walked down there. I wanted to make sure I was seeing if he wanted <laughs> to speak because he didn't sign up, but hey, since, hey, I don't want to go ahead, you. go ahead, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Introduce yourself and a young county commissioner and uh, talk you. about uh, 
a wonderful thing for our community is that the youth can get involved. They don't have to wait around and uh, congratulations. I appreciate it. Well, thank you all. I didn't intend on speaking today. I just want to come down and listen, see how your town's function, make sure you guys are all doing all right and see uh, where I can help if needed. Um, but I am very, very disappointed to hear that uh, Mr. Rich will be leaving us in Emmitsburg. He's done a great job as commissioner. And I really uh, hope you have a lot of different fun in the future endeavors that you have. Um, and as always, I want to keep an open line of communication with all you guys. So if you guys ever have any questions, comments, suggestions, concerns, I'm just a call away, an email away. I'm more than happy to work with any of you guys on anything. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. If I may just continue for a minute, sir. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Um, Cliff, you, I can't believe you're going to step down as old president of lines. You I'm said, sorry, how many, how, taking over. I need a break. <laughs> how many times have you said that's the last term you're going to be president? I don't, I don't mean for me, what you've done, the contributions you've done and the hours you put in uh, serving food for baseball and pool and uh, uh, you're, you're a terrific commissioner that what you give this town is unbelievable. Um, baseball is stunning we opened up a lot we have here and it was just packed all week and uh, it, it was good good to have everybody here and comfortable in their farmer's market it's coming our way i think it's on the 23rd i like that all right uh, Friday, oh, okay <laughs> that's about that and then uh pool is rocking and uh if you get out early in the morning you see a lot of people out there walking around our our neighborhood and i did see the officers out on patrol uh 5 30 the other morning they were roaming around the park and so they're they're out there and they're doing a great job um it's just a lot of uh, things going on here and we just have to really be thankful we got things going we've got the uh, um community garden expansion that's terrific and it's uh, just a wonderful wonderful town to be a part of and pastor john and your son it's good to have you here and uh thank you that's all right now thank you Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry about that. Now I think it's safe to turn the public comment. We have two individuals uh, signed up on the paper here. Do we have anybody online that was signed up to speak? No. Okay. And Ms. Turnquist and Mr. Sloan, it looks like, are you speaking to anything on the agenda or would you like to speak now? Okay. Um, then I turn to Ms. Valerie Turnquist. As you signed up first, if you could just state your name. Um, Valerie Turnquist, resident of Emmitsburg. Good evening. Thank you. Um, I was perusing the town of Emmitsburg website and I noticed a section called how to read your water bill. And I found that very interesting because I didn't understand my water bill. So in looking at the website, I realized there were a few resources there that perhaps town residents aren't aware of. One is the Bay Restaurant. Bay Restoration Fee Hardship Exemption Program, where if you meet certain criteria, uh, you can um, file an application to be exempt from paying the $15 quarterly fee. Uh, there's, other, uh, there's also other, the Low Income Household Water Assistance Program, which I found by searching online. It's a new funded grant program through the state of Maryland. If you dial 211, you can get resources from the state of Maryland. Some of those resources in Emmitsburg are the Senior Center. They offer assistance with water bills. Um, the Frederick County Department of Social Services offers assistance, Salvation Army of Frederick, and St. John's Regional Conference also located in Frederick. So I was hoping maybe we could put these resources for the residents on the Town of Emmitsburg website or newsletter. And that way, if anyone's having trouble paying their water bill, the sewer bill, they can apply for these programs. And there's certain criteria for the programs, which I've included here. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask is if the town at some point could, ex um, in hardship cases for residents who can't pay their water and sewer bills, if the town could consider maybe extended due dates, um, various payment plans, maybe a customer assistance program where part of our budget could be set aside to help those low income families when they are having a hardship or in the, they can't pay their bill. Um, that's it. And I'll just leave it with you. 
Oh, you want to share it with the panel great. or whatever you want to do. Perfect. Thank you. Put that there. Okay, now we have um, Mr. Eric Sloan. I'm going to let Ms. Willis respond to that really quick. Mr. Sloan, thank you. I didn't realize you were going to speak. Sorry. I don't have to. I didn't know if anybody wanted me to respond. So um, go ahead. We are aware of those resources, not all on the website. Um, typically, Reese shares all that information if you do call in and speak to her about your bill. We do offer um, a 50% payment plan uh, already. So there are definitely avenues for people if they are experiencing hardships. We want to work with people, so please don't hesitate to call and talk to Reese. She can point you in the right direction and to get the help that you need. Uh, we can most definitely put some of those other resources up on the website. Um, the 50% plan, if it's not on the website, we can put that up as well. Um, the Bay Restoration Fee Hardship is on the website. The application is on the website. Um, we are revamping how to read your bill uh, probably in the next couple of months when the new rates take effect on how to how to calculate your bill. Okay, great. So we are working towards more information out there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll, um, I'll make sure everybody gets a copy of this though too, just to have it. Thank you. All right, Mr. Sloan, thank you. Well, Eric Sloan, live in the big yellow house here in town. <clears throat> now, water bills are something we can't get away from. But I've lived in other places where they literally ran themselves out of a water supply. We have three quarter inch meters here and one jurisdiction I lived in, dug everybody's meter up and put in a washer that reduced it from a three quarter inch opening to I believe a three eighths opening, I literally cut it in half. You still had enough water to function on. You could flush the toilet, run water to sink, dishwasher, clothing machine, but only one at a time. And eventually, we're going to run out of usable water here. I mean, Thermont years ago pulled mud up into wells, which is what nobody wants to do that's operating off wells. So is there a plan on when we cut off, we just say we can't issue any more water taps? And on the sewer side of it, do we have plans to set more land up for more sewage treatment because eventually we're going to run out of space to pump the sewage into and we sure don't want it leaking into the creek because the state and everybody else will have our butts for it now we unfortunately pawned a whole bunch of the land off that was on the sewer plant for solar panels so that's out of being able to be used so is there a thought in process? Because you got to look five, 10 years down the line. You just can't look to tomorrow of where are we going to put a new, a new sewer plant? You know, because, you know, we can get water from the mountain, we can get water off the hill until we start to draw mud. But if we run out of space for sewer, we can't go to like every other day flushing. That won't work. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. What is our uh, capacity of the water plant right now? We're about 60%. So right now we still have over 1,100 sewer taps available. We are in a very good position for sewer. Right. Um, the capacity, it fluctuates anywhere from 60 to 75% capacity. So it's built, um, built for the future. It's built for the future. That's why it costs the $19 million as opposed to um, the about 11 million, I think, as they originally planned. Uh, water resources, yes, but there are two wells that have already been approved for usage that would go to a new water treatment plant um, originally designed for Emmett Gardens. So the wells are there, partial lines are already in. So it is, it is a resource that the town does have. Um, if there is, as we've talked about with other significant developments, if a, a larger development would come in, obviously they would bear the burden of paying for um, at least part of the payment for a new water treatment plant. So water side, we are looking five, 10 years down the road um, based off the need, the sewer capacity. Right now, your sewer capacity is in good shape. 
because it was designed for the future. Thank you. So I've just gathered my thoughts there for a second. Okay. Um, no other public comment then? There is no administrative business this evening. Therefore, we'll turn to the consent agenda items. Um, Ms. Willits, did you need to speak to any of those? No. Okay. These are all the number one has been approved by the board every year. And then the appointments, two are reappointments. Great. Thank you. Did anybody have any questions regarding the items on the consent agenda? Hearing none, uh, I know that Mr. O'Donnell, um, in his role as board president, usually takes these one at a time. Uh, and I know we don't follow Robert's rules of order to the T. However, my understanding is the consent agenda, you can knock out at once and save some time. Therefore, do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. The motion has been made by Commissioner Davis and seconded by Commissioner Bowman Pollitt. As it's a consent agenda item, there is no further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries four to zero with Commissioner O'Donnell absent. The motion uh, is approved by Commissioner Bowman Pollitt, Commissioner Davis, Commissioner Sweeney, Commissioner Ritz. Now we'll turn to the treasurer for the treasurer's report. We had a beginning balance as of May 30th, or as of May 1st, oh, most gracious, of $8,670,323. Deposits for the month of May were $360,816. Total withdrawals were $333,094 which left us with the ending balance of $8,698,045. Uh, 10 of the top 10, 10 checks are written at the bottom of the page. If anybody has any questions on the, the checks that were written out. Any questions? None? Right. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. The Planning Commission report, uh, there's really nothing to report. I mean, yeah, there is. We, we, we did meet last month. Um, the main, really the only agenda item was a discussion of the um, comprehensive plan. We started that process and that will be ongoing. So um, I encourage anyone that might be interested in the town comprehensive plan to, to uh, <laughs> listen in on, come to our um, meetings for the planning commission. We're looking at potentially at what, 18 months, the two year process. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Now we'll turn to our agenda items. Our first agenda item for consideration is the approval of the engineering improvement plan and design bid for North Seton Avenue waterline and Green Street project. Ms. Willits? I am going to turn this over to Ms. Shaw. She has okay. um, been working on this project. Thank you, Ms. Mm -hmm. Shaw. Good evening. Um, so this is for the North Seaton Avenue water line replacement and Green Street upgrade engineering bid. Um, the bids were published um, as required per town code on Thursday, April 6th, and the deadline was Friday, May 12th. Um, in total, town received three bids from engineering firms. Um, and tonight they're before the board for approval. Um, excuse me. And let's see, the project funding, we currently have a Maryland Water Infrastructure Financing Administration grant for $286,388 and a loan from them for $859,164. The total estimated project cost is one point, just a little over 1.1 million. Um, town staff recommends the approval of Fox and Associates Inc. for $251,056. Um, and that is because Fox and Associates was the lowest bidder. Fox and Associates references were all favorable. They are familiar with the town and they also completed the green concept plan on North Seaton Avenue in 2021. Are there any questions? Any questions for Ms. Shaw? Great, I'm um, hearing none. Do I hear a motion? 
to approve the engineering improvement plan and design bid for North Seton Avenue water line and Green Street project. Do we need to call out the? Um, we need to call out the uh, procedurally. I'm sorry. I, I we need company to call and the winning bid. Yes. Okay. So um, add to what I just stated um, with the contractor of Fox and Associates with the bid of two hundred fifty one thousand fifty six dollars. That's correct. So move. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion's been made by Commissioner Sweeney, seconded by Commissioner Bowman Pollitt. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries four to zero. Commissioner O'Donnell absent with Commissioners Bowman Pollitt, Davis, Sweeney, and Ritz four. Thank you. Now. Commissioner Ritz, were you uh, provided the instructions for the public hearing? Yes, I was. I was getting to that next, and don't hesitate to speak up if uh, procedurally I'm doing something incorrect. So at this time, we'll turn to agenda item number two, which is to discuss the Town of Emmitsburg's proposed fiscal year 2024 community development block grant application. And that is now starting at 742. PM. And I'll turn now to staff for their presentation. All right. Thank you. Um, the public, this public hearing was advertised in English and Spanish as required per the grant in the Frederick News Post on May 23rd, 2023. The community development block grant application requires that we discuss the project, local community development, economic development, housing needs, other community needs, the amount of community development block funds available for state fiscal year 2024 and the range of activities that may be undertaken with the funding. So I'm going to start with the proposed project, which is up on the screen. It is the DePaul Street waterline replacement project. This, um, this is the only picture, so that okay. should be good. Thank you. The community development block grant funding will be used for construction and the replacement of the DePaul Street waterline a severely tuberculated water line located along DePaul Street. The proposed project would reduce the instances of discolored water, limit the frequency of unexpected water shutoffs for repairs, help bring the system into pressure compliance and bring the fire hydrant taken out of service <coughs> into use again. The total estimated cost of the project is 1,120,000 of which the following would fund the project. Um, the community development block grant for $552,500, a MDE fiscal year 24 drinking water state revolving loan for 280,000, a Maryland fiscal year 24 capital budget grant for 277,500 and the town of Emmitsburg would be required to provide $10,000 of in-kind contribution. If awarded grant funding, the proposed timeline would start um, in July. We assume the grant award would occur in July. The environmental review would occur August, September, 2023. The request for construction proposals would occur in September to, to November, 2023. We anticipate an award contract at the December, 2023 Board of Commissioners meeting. Construction period would be January, 2024 to September, 2024, which is a nine month duration period. And the project would be completed um, by October, 2024. And there's also a requirement for a second public hearing, which town staff anticipates having in October, 2024. Um, the project timeline is subject to slight adjustments and changes and will be publicly announced. The community development block grant requires we complete the project within a 24 month period. For local community development, in recent years, the town has undertaken dozens of steps towards improving local community development. Activities include, but are not limited to the new state-of-the-art wastewater treatment plant in 2015. The town invested in solar energy in order to help power town-owned properties. Solar field number one was open in April 2014 and solar field number two was open in August 2015. We have a new ADA compliant playground and community park that opened in 2019. We have new LED streetlights from 2013. Since 2013 and ongoing 
sidewalk connectivity project has added at least eight new sidewalk connections. The town collaborated with SHA in 2016 to replace 4,700 feet of old curbs and sidewalks along Main Street and Seaton Avenue. The project also included renovation of the historic town square. SHA construction constructed a new multi-million dollar bridge over Flat Run on East Main Street since 2013. We have documented over 1 million of community legacy grant funds, Maryland Historical Trust grant funds, resident business funds and town funds um, invested in the downtown area within the state's sustainable community area. We have received numerous grants in order to improve our parks and pool house, such as the addition of a dog park and a disc golf course. Numerous wayside exhibits have been added to town in order to promote our history and attract visitors and has resulted in a historic walking tour. We have planted dozens of trees and installed multiple recycling bins in our parks to support environmental sustainability. Staff are currently working on adding a new restroom concession stand building in the south of E. Eugene Myers Community Park, and there are many other projects not listed. For economic development, the town has seen a significant increase in economic development in recent years, such as the following new businesses. The Silo Hill Plaza on Silo Hill Parkway just got their site plan and improvement plat approved. They have yet to get their bonding in place. Federal Stone has had all their plans approved. Town staff is in the process of calculating the bond and creating the public works agreement. Rudder's gas station and convenience store opened in 2023. A vape store at Silo Hill Strip Mall got their change of use permit in April 2023. Wookie Walkers at Silo Hill Strip Mall opened in April 2022. Mason Dixon Mixon at Silo Hill Strip Mall opened in 2021. Tuscany Pizza opened in 2021. Dynamic Automotive started in 2021. Duncan Fast Food Restaurant with drive through opened in October 2020. And the Tattoo Place got its change of use permit in 2019. McDonald's recently got a zoning permit to add a second drive through lane. Their lighting plan is under review. Sunco is going to change to Birdies. Multiple developers are asking for information regarding annexing the Fraley, Fraley Road farm into town. The developer for Emmett Ridge 2 is in contact with town staff. They're trying to figure out how to incorporate a common area into the development as required by the code. Mount St. Mary's is trying to add an additional wing to accommodate nursing students. The owner of the trout property is interested in a text amendment to modify the permitted use of his property via a floating zone and there are many other develop economic development projects. For housing needs, the town lacks affordable housing options such as duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes, and townhouses. The town also lacks senior housing options, and there are several lots available for development still in our residential neighborhoods. Other community needs, the Creamery Road sewage pump station replacement project should break ground this summer. The water treatment plant treatment clarifier project is currently being worked on by staff. The North Seaton Avenue water line replacement project and Green Street upgrade should finish engineering by May 2024 and construction should be completed by December 2025. The town desires to continue to replace severely tuberculated water lines. A new water treatment plant in Emmett Gardens will also need to be constructed at some point in the future if development continues to rise. The amount of community development block grant funds available for state fiscal year 2024 is $9,920,176, excuse me. The range of activities that may be undertaken with the funding um, for use of funds, the grant program, excuse me, community development block grant program funded projects must be eligible for activities under program regulations and must meet one of the three national object objectives. The first is it needs to benefit persons of low and moderate income or it needs to eliminate slum and blight, or it needs to meet an urgent need of recent origin that threatens public health and safety. Eligible projects generally fall into three types, housing, public facilities, such as water, sewer, streets, childcare, senior community centers and shelters, and economic development. The draft application for this project will be available for the public to review until 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, Tuesday, June 6, 2023, on the town website at www.emmitsburgmd.gov. We will also accept public comment during that time. This application was initially posted on the town website on May 30th. That is my presentation, thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Shaw. Are there any questions from the board members for town staff at this time? Hearing none, are there any public comments on these matters this evening? Please note that once the public hearing is closed, um, there's no opportunity procedurally to speak to that. So basically what I'm getting at is now is your chance. Okay. If no one has anything more to present, the public comment period is now closed. And now I turn to the board for discussions regarding the community development block grant application. Do we have any questions? None? No? All right, I'll make it brief. Sorry. <laughs> Ms. Shaw, you stated that everything, when it's all said and done, this would only cost us a total of $10,000? Correct, excluding the loan. Excluding the loan, yes. And that $10,000, remind me again, that is in the budget. We budgeted that so, expense, correct. So it's an in-kind expense, yes. It's in your capital improvement plan for water. Um, the board does have the option, and, and Michelle and I have discussed this. Once the water clarifier is completed, you will have approximately 1.5 million left in ARPA money, which could be used in lieu of an MDE loan for either DePaul Street or Norseen or both, or it can be applied to another project. So you will have that option of not taking out a loan. And that we can discuss that at a future meeting. Okay. And remind me again, the, the, the entire application process, is this when you were reaching out to in, individuals in town, for example, like on DePaul Street? And did we get enough feedback? Are, are there, is there anything out there that would um, be a deterrent for us? We've received 22 letters back and there were some very good comments that I think will um, help support the application. Okay, good. Because I remember we were we were seeking that feedback and we weren't getting, getting it, but it, they did come through and we got what we needed basically. Okay, good. All right, thank you. All right, then. Um, if you don't have anything else then, I do we have a motion then to end the public hearing? So move. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion's been made by Commissioner Sweeney, seconded by Commissioner Davis. Do we have any further discussion on this item? Great. Therefore, um, all those in favor of closing the public hearing at this time, please say aye. 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 No one against. Motion carries four to, four to zero. Commissioners Bowman Pollitt, Commissioner Davis, Commissioner Sweeney, Commissioner Ritz, with Commissioner O'Donnell absent. How was that? That was very good. Thank you. <laughs> now, this is where I get confused. That's done. Are we? What else do we do with agenda item two? Are we moving to number three now? Now you just moved to three. Okay, perfect. Thanks. And if there was something else I needed there. All right, agenda item three, the approval of resolution 23-03R, the Community Development Block Grant CDBG submittal authorization for consideration. Ms. Shaw? Um, this resolution is required for the application. Um, so I'm just requesting board approval tonight so we can submit the application. And the, as you can see, the amount that we're requesting from the state is $552,500. Thanks. Appreciate that. Um, any questions for anyone? No. One I have. We're requesting that amount, but they could come back with something else. Correct. Okay. Do we need to revisit that then? Or because we're authorizing this this evening, if we approve this, if it comes in a different amount, do we have to go back to square one or we're good to go? We're good to go. Okay. Thank you. 
All right, great then. If there are no other uh, questions on the matter, then do I hear a motion to approve resolution 2303R, the Community Development Block Grant Submittal um, Authorization? So moved. A motion's been made by Commissioner Bowman Pollitt. Do I hear a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Davis. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone against? Motion carries four to zero. Commissioner Bowman Pollitt, Commissioner Davis, Commissioner Sweeney, and Commissioner Ritz, with Commissioner O'Donnell absent. Agenda item four, the review of the stormwater utility fee moratorium and approval of resolution 23-04R for consideration. Ms. Willits. Yes. So as we talked at the uh, last budget meeting, uh, the mayor proposed um, putting a one-year moratorium on the implementation of the stormwater utility fee. Um, and that has to be done by resolution. And... Um, Basically, the resolution states that the board, the mayor and the board would place a one year moratorium on the implementation of ordinance 22 05, which created the stormwater utility fee to fund stormwater management, storm drainage, and water resource programs and serv services. With the um, resolution ordinance or stating that ordinance 22 05 will go into effect July 1 of 2024. Um, I've reviewed the um, current state of the stormwater fund, and if the budget is approved as is with the budget transfer in the stormwater um, during fiscal year 24, we will have approximately $163,000 in, <clears throat> in fund two for stormwater management in this upcoming fiscal year. As we presented in the budget, uh, the estimated base, estimated costs we estimated high for stormwater in fiscal year 24 would be 157,228. That would include any preliminary work on the Northgate stormwater basin, which would be done during your new permit term, which is October of 23 to September 30th of 2028. Um, we feel that we're in a good position for, with our stormwater fund. Um, if something were to change, we would ask for a budget transfer, um, as we did previously this year when we complete our audit of fiscal year 23 to then add money, if need be, to the stormwater fund. Great, thank you. Um, any questions for town staff? Yeah, I have Commissioner Davis? one or two. We're not going to put ourselves in the same situation we have with water by I'm all about saving the citizens money. We're not going to be kicking this can down the road and then have ourselves in trouble in a couple of years to be able to meet what's required. No, I think we're in a good position right now. We've talked to our contractor um, or our consultant, and we think we're in a good position for this fiscal year. Again, you can make authorized a budget transfer in typically in February after the audit's done, if there's monies left over from fiscal year 23, um, you're not gonna look to do your Northgate Basin until um, probably fiscal year 25, 26. Um, I think this is a good step for us to, to help people due to the water rate increase. Mr. Sweeney, did you have a question? No. I'm okay, thank you. Um, I, I have one question here, and I, I didn't see it, but I think you made reference to it. The July 1st, 2024, mm -hmm. if we vote this evening to put a moratorium on this, are you saying it goes into effect automatically on, on July 1st, 2024? Yes, so it would show up in your bill on the September 30th, 2024. So it's basically a, exactly a one-year moratorium. Okay, thanks. I, I couldn't. I must have overlooked it in there, but um, it should be. It's the last sentence in the first paragraph on your resolution. Um, not seeing it. Page 34. First paragraph, last sentence. Ah, thank you. You're Good. Well, Comm Commissioner O'Donnell actually did want to state something this evening and he passed off to me, but it's, it's a moot point because it's already in there. Um, 
he was hoping to review this in 12 months, if possible, um, to see if we needed to keep it in place or to be lifted. So if we vote on this this evening, it automatically will go into effect July 1st. You can always revisit it prior to July 1st um, if the board would choose so. Should we put something, throwing this out here to everybody up here this evening, should we put something in there to revisit this scheduled for June of 2024 before the July 1st effect date? Why not? I don't have any problem with it either. Yeah, we would, we had actually would ask to do review it. We would review it during the budget. Um, so we would start looking at it in February. If you do it in June, oh, okay. it won't get into the budget in time. Okay. If you were to change your mind or, 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 um, extend it. So, um, I will bring it back to the board once I start working on the budget in February and probably look to have it come back for review. Uh, we can do March, March, April. Okay. But and we, just... we will, we'll be looking at it when we go to do our budget transfers um, at the same time also. Okay. I'm comfortable with that. I just, I know he, he did reference that. So that makes sense at budget time. So we don't need to actually put that wording into the resolution then. Right. Okay. And that, that point in time, we, we would be looking for a direction as, as part of putting the budget together. So that would certainly be a discussion point. All right, thank you. So I brought that up, Commissioner Bowman Pollitt. You you seem to ag uh, agree with me there. Are, are you comfortable with town uh, yeah. what town staff presented? Okay, great. Thanks. All right. Well, then, do we have any um, any further questions? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve the resolution twenty three dash zero four R the stormwater utility fee moratorium. Uh, approval and resolution. Uh, so move. So move. Okay. And do I hear a second? Seconded by Commissioner Bowman Pollitt. Uh, Commissioner Sweeney made the motion. It was seconded by Commissioner Bowman Pollitt. Any further uh, discussion on the matter? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, no one opposed. Motion carries four to zero. Um, Commissioner Bowman Pollitt, Commissioner Davis, Commissioner Sweeney, Commissioner Ritz, with Commissioner O'Donnell absent. Keep, keep turning here. All right, agenda item number five, the presentation and review of FY24 Town of Emmitsburg budget for consideration. Ms. Willits or Mr. Tabler. Good evening. Um, um, because of the, um, the vote that just occurred, um, I handed out um, a supplement or um, an item to put in your budget for pages 22 and 24 based on um, the moratorium of the fees for a year. Um, so those, would, those numbers would be part of the budget discussion that we would propose this evening um, concerning the budget. Um, the only changes are for the stormwater management is um, the revenues that were uh, initially um, included are reduced to zero, and the expenses for that department would be reduced by half, going from fifteen thousand to seventy-five hundred. Um, we would still have some. The majority of the seventy-five hundred would be some uh, time allocated from the town plan time for the year, um, and then all the numbers for those are updated within the budget as a whole. Um, one of the things um, during the past couple of weeks is we offered and asked that the commissioners um, pass along any um, questions they may have. A couple of the commissioners got back to us with some good questions and we appreciate that. Um, if you would have any additional questions this evening, um, that's what we're here for. Um, and I guess, you know, we won't rehash everything that's been gone over, but um, if any further uh, questions are uh, wanted tonight, then we'll certainly try to help as much as possible. Thank you, Mr. Tabler. Do we have any uh, questions then for? I have some questions. Oh, okay. Commissioner Bowman Pollitt. Um, 
again, it, this is just me being new to the budget. So I'm still, it takes me a while to connect dots and have puzzle pieces come into place. So looking at next year, whether increase in water rate, how much extra, what is the difference that we would be bringing in next year compared to this year? How much more would we be bringing in? Mm -hmm. um, and let me get your, I'll get the specific page. Um, if you look at um, it's 22 spread on page 26, mm -hmm. the water fund mm -hmm. total revenues would increase from is what we're estimating from about 566,000 to 665,000. Um, the one specific line item utility charge is where those rates would be reflected for the next fiscal year. Um, again, with the revenue in total for the depart for the uh, water department, a lot of times the amount in total depends on the tap fees, which we have half of what we had last year. So, okay, so we're looking at bringing in about hundred thousand more. If I did my correct, you said yeah, so five hundred. Yeah, or go ahead. Yeah, so in fiscal year twenty three, fiscal year twenty three, we brought estimated about four hundred twenty five thousand in utility charges. In fiscal year twenty four, with the rate increase, we're estimating um, five hundred fifty thousand. Is that right, Cole? That's correct. Yeah. So a little over a hundred thousand. Yes. Okay. After all the information that's been presented at the last couple weeks, I'm still I'm looking to take a budget class. My question is how much could we, how much is charged per year to the water fund by staff that's not directly working inside the water plant? So it's, it's probably, um, I don't have the percentages, Cole would have the percentages, but it's, it's pretty much the entire department or office. I know Cole and Reese and financial, some of their time is allocated to water and sewer because they're in charge of billing. Uh, Ms. Shaw is a grant administrator. Her time, because she works on water grants and water projects, some of her time's budgeted. Uh, Jessica Hausman at the front desk, uh, she takes in all the billing. Um, part of her time is, is charged to the water department. Part of my time is charged to the water department. Pretty much every there's a percentage of everybody's time that's a charge to either the water department or the sewer department. Um, your public works guys, uh, Jimmy and all his guys, part of their time goes to the water and sewer because they fix um, they do the water, uh, water meter upgrades. They do the, the leak repairs. Um, they read the water meters. Do they do the shutoffs? So pretty much everybody's time, there's a certain percentage of everybody's time that goes to water and or sewer or both. <clears throat> so based on that estimated percentage, can we as a town recommend a decrease in the water rate increase by restricting those who charge the water fund, only those who work within that plant. And then you're not showing a self-sustaining water department or sewer department if you're not doing that because the water the water department, if you don't put coal and Reese in there, then your bills aren't gonna go out. You're not gonna generate bills. You're not gonna generate invoices. You're not gonna have anybody in the office that's doing any water or sewer work. Um, you're not going to have Maddie working on your grants. You're not going to have Jess or Sabrina taking your payments. It's all tied together. It's all part of being a self-sustaining water fund. And when we did the water and sewer rate study, everybody's salaries were taken into consideration during that study with a 5% labor increase each year for the next five years. Right. So it's all been taken into consideration mm -hmm. that got us to those recommended rate increases. That part I understand. Um, where I started to it percolate in my head was that with the 4% COLA and the one to three based merit, the merit based salary increase that would put us potentially up to 7%, which would go over the proposed amount that was factored in for inflation. Mm -hmm. So I know we can't take money from the general fund and move it into the water fund. So that's not allowed. And every, I've had a lot of residents ask, 
how can we, can't we just draw from this, this general fund? The answer is no. However, we can kind of flip-flop it and draw our salaries from the general fund. One of the things that occurs during the audit is a review of all the timesheets um, that employees have. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I know they look at is to make sure that things are being um, allocated properly within the departments. Um, that's the reason like the town account in my position that a certain percentage goes to water and sewer. Mm -hmm. And that has always been historically done. And that's um, just general accounting principles. When you say always historically, what do you mean like forever since the inception of time? Just for as long as- No, we, just since yeah. I've been here. And under, okay. and when I worked for the former town manager, I mean, it's just good practice to accurately depict where you're spending your money. Because mm -hmm. if you're not accurately depicting it, then you don't have a true representation and then you'll never know what you're actually spending for your water fund, your sewer fund, or for that regard, your parks, your streets, or any other fund. I mean, the idea is to accurately depict what this town does and where the money is being spent. And I think, I, I do not think that it's good practice to, if I'm spending my time in water, cause I'm working on the water clarifier, then my time should go to the water or if I'm spending on sewer or for, you know, coal or, or that matter, it's just good accounting practice and auditing practice. And when USDA looks at what we're doing mm -hmm. and if they see a significant reduction in, okay, so your salary has just dropped exponentially. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. You're not self-sustaining. No, we're and, taking it from the general fund. Can and, I and, jump in for a minute? Yeah, we're you not self-sustained then. What, what, what would show that we're not self-sustained though, if we, in the general fund, let's, for example, not to pick on Mr. Tabler, but I will, um, under the finance portion of the general fund, to create a new account, somehow called water, that he could bill his time to, that would be under his home center, whatever you want to call it, finance, but it's got a separate line item. Um, you know, um, it's we have posted it. shipping, printing, contracts, all everything else you know, a line item that says water, and then you build to that, and whoever Reese builds to that, whoever, it would show up then that said individuals did Commissioner build to Reese, that water. Or Ritz, um, I don't think you can do that based on general accounting principles. You don't um, think or you don't know, and I'm not trying I, to be- I, And I'd have to ask our CPA for okay. on yeah. that. I mean, these are questions that, um, you know, we need to ask the auditor, because um, they're the legal financial responsible people that do our audit and report it to the state. Um, I think it's, and, and this is just me, I think it's bad practice to not accurately show exactly what you're doing in water or sewer and your general fund. It's just masking one problem with another. So you're going to, so let's just move everybody's oh. salary to your general fund, which if you recall, you only have $89,000 left over in your general fund. So then you put all the salaries over there. So now you don't have enough money in your general fund. So what are you going to do? Raise taxes? It's, I mean, this is ac is, this is as much accurate or as accurate as we can make our budget. And it's, yeah, I don't, I don't have an answer for it. Honestly. That, that's all I had. I, I didn't even think of that ahead of time. Just you said it. So it made, no, I mean, and so. actually it was a question that I received from a resident that made me think because um, I think up until the last two or three weeks, I, if somebody were to stop me on the street and say, where does the salary come from? From water and sewer, I would say from our water and sewer guys. And I think most people would be under that, Im that impression. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think I have a hard time saying we're going to put a 36% water increase on our residents and we're already in a very poor town knowing that that money goes into the water fund, which is directly funding salaries. And we're asking for a potential 7% increase in salary. And I'm not against salary. So let me make that perfectly clear. I'm not against salary. I'm not against COLA. What I'm looking at doing, I know Frank, you had said at one of the meetings, you know, if you have another way of looking at this, then bring it to my attention. And it was only through mm -hmm. questions of the residents that had me starting to put this together. Um, that no, we can't take money from the general fund and put it into water. I understand that, that is verified. However, 
I know that there are other municipalities in Frederick County that only charge salary from their general fund. Um, which municipalities? Because I have I have talked to all the other managers, the small municipalities that Emmitsburg is comparable to, because it doesn't do us any good to co compare to larger municipalities because they have bigger budgets, they do things differently. Mm -hmm. um, for example, Thermont, they have a water department, they have a sewer department. You just work water, you just work sewer. That's that's how they do it. But you have to think your water plant can't cooperate with just your operators. Mm -hmm. If you take um, Cole, Reese, whoever out of the equation, mm -hmm. your water plant, it doesn't do you any good. There's there's not a full-time person doing the billing for water and sewer. So my, so, my question, so, so, sorry, so time is allocated with employees' timesheets and um, mm -hmm. that, you know, I, we can confirm with our um, audit firm that we have um, that that is uh, accepted practice and generally accepted, but I-, I Generally accepted. Well, so what I'm saying is it's, it's, I know what that's what they call it, but I know that Walkersville, for example, does not charge any salary other than those that work at the plant from water. Everything else comes from general fund and they have not had to look, at, they've had a very stable water fund and they're not looking at having to increase water rates. I know Thermont does cross charging kind of like we do right now. Um, talking to, to them, they're admitting that they're draining their water fund and they're gonna have to look at changing something because it's no longer working for them. So if I'm looking at other places in Frederick County who are struggling with the same thing, I think it's I think it's worth looking into a different way of looking at our budget. If we can't put general fund into water, can we put salary into general fund? And and, and from what I've what I've read what I've found in my own research over the last three weeks, there is nothing preventing that. Nobody's saying that there's nothing to prevent it. But mm -hmm. if you want to accurately show where you're spending your money and where time is spent and you want to have an accurate audit, that's what we're saying. I'm not saying that it's you can't do it, mm -hmm. but you're not it's not true representation. And you're then going to dig your hole in your general fund. And that's that's something that you guys are going to have to realize that you're going to you're basically robbing peter to pay paul is what it is so like when i think of something like the second amendment and the right to bear arms i think most of most of us in emmitsburg would think yeah we have a right to bear arms but if i come back and say do you have the right to own a nuclear warhead i think most people would say oh that's a little ridiculous so i guess where i'm getting with this is where do we draw the line where's the line so Yes, we take salary, but like water bill postage, does that come out of water fund as well? Yes. Well, okay, so the so the the rabbit hole goes really deep. So what rabbit, comes out of it's, you're sending out water, sewer, and trash bills. So your postage is taken out of the water fund, the sewer fund, and the refuse fund. Mm -hmm. Spread um certain percentage mm -hmm. because that's what it is. It's your water fund. Mm -hmm. It's part of running your plant. That's how you get your money back on your bills. However, you also told me that there's water people who sometimes cut grass when they have a slow day. I did not see any percentage coming out of anywhere else other than water. They cut grass at the water plant and sewer plant. But that's water considered water? Grass. Yeah, it's, it's the one maintenance of your water plant and your sewer plant. If you don't cut the grass, then the grass is going to be too high. They've got snakes up at the water plant, so they have to maintain it. If I may, this, I mean, this is not a new policy that we put in place. This is continuity from over 20, 20 some years of the, I understand. We've used the same accounting firm, basically, it used to be Draper and McKinley, and then the, they decide not to uh, stay with municipal accounting. And uh, the same lady, uh, she went over to another firm. So we've had the continuity. We, that's important to people is continuity of what we're doing. So we're not just, I think what's important to people is knowing that we are doing our due diligence after right. a thirty-six percent water increase on our public, and it's we know it's going to cause hardship. And I think if you ask your your everyday resident on the street 
Where does our salaries come from? We're going to hear the general fund. And that was my impression up until three weeks ago, whether or not it's this is the way we've always done it. We cannot fall back on that when we're looking at what we're putting back into onto our residents. So if our residents are funding COLA and performance-based salary increases, I don't think anybody anticipated that. And I think they would say, yes, we need water. Yes, we need pipe improvements. Right. Yes, we need all of that. I don't want our water to shut off. So I know... Commissioner Davis, you you asked for some creative ideas. This was one that popped into my head literally five o'clock last night. So it's I'm bringing it to the board as food for thought. And if I may, um, so we go ahead. I just want to continue what uh, Commissioner Bowman Pollitt was saying. Um, thank you for that. I remember when you ran for office, you you referenced checks and balances. I remember you saying checks and balances a lot. And I think that's a great, great example. What what you're asking here, it's a it's a perfect example of a check in the balance. Yes, continuity. Yes, we do things. We've been doing things this way all these years. Maybe looking at it though, you know, can we look at it from a different perspective? What if we change something? You know, instead of what it can't happen, it's going to cause problems. Potentially, it could, but I don't think that question hurts to ask that. Um, no, absolutely not. You know, and I, I think that that falls that falls with everything. You know, um, one thing that really has upset me, and I hate to derail this, but it's been bugging me for a little while. We just went through that process of raising the water rates, and the the statement was made several times that the board of commissioners kicked the can. They just kicked the can all the time. Well, maybe back in the day, the board of commissioners were brought that information. Hey, we need to raise water rates. No, we don't want to raise them now. We don't want to hurt everybody. I have been in office since 2014. I don't remember once during those nine years until we started looking at this, that that was an agenda item that we needed to raise the water rates. You know, did we think of asking as a board? Was I sitting there saying, hey, I wonder how the water is going right now. Should we be raising the water rates? So I don't really think it's fair to blame it on the board of commissioners entirely too. I think it's everybody in this room involved. And I'm not, I'm not like pointing out right now, Ms. Willis, because there was an individual in before you, but it's everybody looking at it, you know, and maybe, maybe it wasn't. And what, what can we do going forward to prevent that from happening? Because to tie into what Mr. Sloan was saying this evening, actually, that's something else that I was thinking about. What if our water runs dry? You know, we're, we're looking at infrastructure, putting in a clarifier, putting in a, a line from the mount, but what if some catastrophic event causes our wells to run dry? What do we do then? Then, then, then we're really stuck. So thanks for that. I appreciate that. Um, that's, that's, you said it a lot better than I could. Um, it's something that I, I, I think about from time to time too. Not trying to be difficult, just looking at things from a different perspective. Thanks. Mm -hmm. But if you take your money from another pot and that pot goes dry, then where do you take it from? Is, is what they're doing. That's why they allocated the. I'll give you an example. Look at our swimming pool. How much did we pay for a swimming pool? 360 some thousand. We redone the whole pool. Mm -hmm. We do not make any money to pay back for the swimming pool. It's all money that we give out. Um, yeah, we lose money on the pool every year. We lose year. money on the pool. We lose money on the parks. Just, they re, they revamped the pool and things were doing, we actually increased attendance, things were going good. And then unfortunately, COVID just ruined everybody's life, including our town pool, you know, the no, attendance. They, they never get back. But um, it's just a, a thing that we it, provide for the town. Yeah, but I, I, I do agree. We would lose money in that, yeah, but but we were doing better. At least we showed something, well, yeah, you know, it something for it. At times it does, but it, it's... We went broke here before by taking from we didn't know where stuff was allocated from mm -hmm. when, when i first came in there wasn't even any money to pay for employees salaries or anything we had to borrow money from the bank to pay for salaries mm -hmm. that's why we started the enterprise fund and stuff but the and i certainly wouldn't want to put us in that position too and I, that's why i'm just saying i hope that we're really looking at this going forward too um from all angles we obviously don't want to do anything now to put us in that predicament, but we also no. don't want to, but we have the, to be forward thinking and, 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 and planning for the future as right. well. Um, so when we apply for the grants, we're not even, 
we're mounting up ponds for the grants for the water and I give for the water. Okay. We have to show exactly where everything is built from and come from. They have to show all that in order for us to even qualify for the grants. So Completely show, understand. You yeah. Know, where all that stuff comes from. So and when I talked to Walkersville, they said they have no problems getting grants with their current salary structure. So we we We'd be better off not giving the seven percent raise to everybody. Just I'm not against not raises. I'm I'm against. Or right, let me put it to you this way: If we were to take office staff and move them to the general fund, instead of taking that percentage from the water fund, how much money would that save the water fund? How much closer would that get us to the ninety day reserve? If we just take that percentage and move it to general fund, and I'm not even talking about all 15, 17 people. I'm talking just, just that. Well, there's... I did some rough estimates. We could save a lot of money. And obviously I don't think we can afford to do all of it, but I think it is something that needs to be looked at in order to, if we want to approve COLA and merit-based raises, then let's look at where we can draw it from. There's, there's two things that, that caught my interest in, and one is that there is another municipality doing this mm -hmm. now whether it's right or not i don't know mm -hmm. and the other thing is there's another municipality saying we're doing it your way mm -hmm. and we're struggling mm -hmm. so doesn't that kind of throw a red flag up to say you know and, yeah thermot's uh, getting ready to, to to look into raising their rates i had a conversation with uh, mr humor right and well and the, and the other thing is if we can if we can do it out of the general fund we transferred three hundred thousand dollars to different projects. So when you say we only have eighty-seven thousand yeah. dollars at the end of the budget year, we threw that money around. So we can tighten our belts under the general fund. Maybe our happy days of buying new pickup trucks and doing that thing has to stop for a little bit, and we can pay those salaries out of there if it's permissible. Uh, maybe we got to cut back on the the parks grants for a while and anything that's a matching. Maybe we shouldn't be going there for a while and we can tighten up our general fund. We can't tighten up the water sewer because that's just operational stuff that we need. But if there's some way that we could get those salaries over there legally um, and save that money, I think it's something we should look at. I, I just, I mean, if there's somebody else already doing it and it's people that are doing it our way or struggling, that kind of throws a flag up. I really think it gives us more flexibility. If, if it's legal, it gives us more uh, spending flexibility out of the general fund. Mm -hmm. Since we can't transfer anything over there, if we can do that, I, I think maybe we need to, to take a look at that. I, I don't want to delay the budget. We can't delay the budget. I get that. But I would like for us to to take a look at that mm -hmm. even if we take one step towards it is what i'm thinking start small we can't move everybody over but i'm very interested in seeing you know if we were to take one salary charge it to the general fund can we afford it and what will that do to help put us into the black in the in the water fund and kind of break it down that way I could do it if I had the exact salaries, I do not. So when I figured it out, I based it on the minimum of each grade level. Well, it's percentages. So it would have to be, it's not an individual salary. Like my whole salary doesn't go to sewer and doesn't go to water. Correct. It goes all over every single department. Coles doesn't go solely to for So all your people in here, mm -hmm. it's a certain percentage that right. goes to water, goes to sewer, and then it goes to either legislative or, or you know, planning and zoning. I think Najelia is the only one that all her time goes pretty much to planning, right? Cool. Or does hers get, yeah. So. Um, 5% to sewer, I think. So I guess the idea is what happens if we take that percentage off of some of it that goes to water right now and move it into general. And I'm not saying take it out of every single department and move it in, you know, like, what does that look like if we just shift water? Because if others are doing that and it's helping them, then I think it needs to be considered. So I'm going to reach out to Walker Show because this is news to me about what they do. Um, but I wouldn't recommend anybody that has direct ties to your water and sewer like Cole and Reese. I mean, that 
they truly spend time in water and sewer, 100%. Maddie's grants are t like probably 60% water and sewer. The remaining is in parks. I haven't received those percentages yet. I'm still waiting. Yeah. So um, I don't have the exact percentages. Cole has them. So I'll need those. Um, we can figure it out and make recommendations, but then you will not pass the budget tonight. Nope. Okay. You have one night to do it. Mm -hmm. June 12th. I'm fine with that. And I don't know that we can turn it around that fast. I think we need to so, for our due diligence of our residents. We need to look at this because as of right now, I'm not inclined to pass the budget knowing that there were other options on the table that I put together from very general questions that I received from residents. So I think, I think we also need to hear from our accountant. And our auditor. Uh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I mean, our auditor, auditors on that. Um, what's acceptable in the state of Maryland right. process to do this. So, yeah, know, I thought I they were really like to hear what sorry your, your conversation you have with Walkersville about what yeah what kind of system they have. Like mm -hmm. Thermos Yeah, here's I have their budget pulled up. I can't can't tell from their budget what they do without speaking to them. Um And you mentioned June 12th, obviously, if we don't pass this this evening, that's the only opportunity. I know that the. Because yeah, June 19th is um, the office is closed and the mayor is unavailable that week. OK. And then your last week, I think three of you are going to the summer conference and it has to be. What was the date in the charter? Yeah, that, that's that's the 26th or 27th. The 27th. Yeah which is problematic. And I never really noticed that in my opinion, it's problematic because it's written in such a way that here we are, we have these meetings every so often and special meetings as needed, but we have until June 27th. If we cannot come to the board of commissioners as a majority cannot come to a conclusion that yes, this budget is good. Or this budget is, is not good. Then what we have presented to us is automatically adopted. Mm -hmm. with no input really well we there was some input if we're saying no to it making some changes but we have no final input in it there's no other input into it so again it's it's passed then with no mm -hmm. checks so, and balances so to speak i understand so there's no way if we would approve the budget tonight and we found out good information or bad information depends who you're looking at um that October we can do some transfers of funds or so, we can change the way we're paying people. I'm sorry, say it again. If, if we found out that it would be okay to, to do this, mm -hmm. to pay, you know, take people a salary or two out of the water department and pay out of the general fund. We just couldn't start to, to do that. It's, it's not like we don't have the funds there. The funds are there. I'm, I'm thinking that's what this look is for. As part of the, the other questions we have. Right, right. Yeah. It's saying saying they say, oh yeah, that's acceptable. That's an acceptable practice. Uh, it's and, an option at that point. Right. And then in October or say the November paychecks start coming out of the general funds for employee X and half for employee Z. I would imagine that you could. Um, I'm trying to pull up the that, code real quick to see what it says. Does that make about sense? It? I mean, because the board can always make um, I believe I'm trying to put, it's coming up now, uh, budget changes, budget transfers, um, things throughout the year. You know, we do the budget transfers in what January or February. And if you recall, one of the transfers, this, this past go around was for salaries. Um, when we did that April, don't want to blank. Let me pull up the budget part of the code real quick. If you don't give me just a minute. Cole, do you think of anything about that? No, just like in the other past years when we've had budget transfers, mm -hmm. you can modify the budget during the fiscal year based on a proposed change in a vote. And while you're looking for that, you know, if, if, if you remember, we made a promise to the citizens two months ago that we were going to work very hard to try to find other options for our water issue. 
and and I think we're following through with our promise. Well, Commissioner Pone the pilot more than than the rest of because she has obviously done a lot of homework, and I thank you for that. Yes, thank you. I I, I there was some while you were looking for this. I there was some. I had some reservations. I know I had didn't send any other specific questions to town staff for tonight, but you bring up some really good points. So th thank you for that. And then usually if I have any reservations, then I'm not comfortable in voting in the affirmative. So if we were to vote tonight, I cannot vote in confidence to approve the budget this evening. I'm just saying, thank you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really speak to it, um, but I do know that the board can do and make changes to the budget throughout the fiscal year. Commissioner Rich, would that help you? I don't want to put a burden on staff uh, by not having a budget and putting a burden on the rest of us by having to find another time to meet or going in with the current budget for next year. Well, here's the deal. As you all know, I made an announcement this evening that I'm going to not seek re-election, but I'm not going to enter a period of checkout mode either in this time frame. I'm going to continue to do what I do. So um, I won't be part of that equation. What? Oh, uh, you would be. Well, that's true. If it's in the fall, I won't be unless it's at the Oct Well, no, the agenda items at the October meeting. Mm -hmm. I've been looking for the agenda right item. One is the swearing in of the new. Um, elected officials I, I would not be part of that well it could be something that but they could find out by august so you would be part of it then potentially i just or, don't think we will or you could my, change your mind you right know? my only concern is i don't think we will have the answers because unfortunately you know we didn't have time to to prepare for this um i just don't think we would be able to get the answers in time and then plus make the ch recommended changes to the budget post it with the adequate time to be ready for a meeting in less than a week. And that's my concern. I don't want to bring something back in a week and then we're back at square one again and then trying to scramble a date or find a date where everybody's available to um, meet again. That's my only concern. And I don't want to give anybody misinformation if the auditors come back and say, you absolutely, we don't know that Walkersville is doing that or they shouldn't be doing that or whatever the case may be. You know, I would think we would want to defer to what our auditors say. They, they are the ones that keep us from getting in trouble and review our books. And we've had the same auditors for many years. I think everybody's happy with them. Um, oh, no, no, no. I know Cole and I would like to talk to them to see, you know, what, what they recommend. I mean, maybe it's something that we're missing. I, and well, I'm just going to, I'll tell you like the, the first night that we had our new town attorney here, you know, um, don't, don't find us a way to say no, find us a way to say yes and keep us out of jail. So we want to do it legally. And if it's there, please try to find it for Yeah, us. They're working on an answer to your question about funding uh, one specific project in, in the water, say in the water fund from the general fund. So that wasn't a definite no. So it's not a definite no. Um, I'll sleep better than anything. Um, <laughs> I, I hate to say that you might have been right. Um, that kills you, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> Can we uh, strike that from the record? Um, but they're they're working on that, and so they are looking for ways to work through things. So th I think they would if we asked them to. I might even have a beer before I go. <laughs> Wait, can they come back in August? Can you just come talk to all these people in the next two months and come back in August for a budget? Could probably come back in July. I mean, I can't imagine it's going to take more than a month, Cole. But do we have to do have them say yes? Yeah. First of all, do, do, is can can staff and the mayor buy into this? If they understand where we're coming from, trying to solve a couple different problems. I don't agree. We gotta I, have, I don't agree know. with it, but I understand, and I I understand what you guys are saying and what you're trying to work through, and. Well, first of all, we're trying it. to keep your raises. That's, and I, that's one yeah, thing. And, and, and we're I trying to keep the employees' for, raises. For but. my guys out there that work tirelessly and have worked through many, many problems out in the field, those are the guys that I care about. So obviously, I want them to get their raise. They deserve it. Um, I just 
my only concern is not accurately showing something, but that's just me. And if, if the auditors come out and say, yeah, you can do this, then I don't have a problem with it. Well, that's the part I think would be really, it's a good starting point is to find out where that line is because like even postage, for example, would it be so terrible to have the postage in the general fund? Like how far down do we go? And if the time is estimated and timesheets are done every two weeks, I just want to make sure that the process is tightened up so we have a really accurate representation if we're going to be billing to that water fund. Um, and we, we, change, we, we do. Each budget year, the estimates change based off of that year's, that previous year's timesheet. So, so say for me, um, last year was heavy on the pump station, so they charge more time to sewer. Or so next year, um, it's more legislative. So they're going to charge more of my time legislative. It changes each year mm -hmm. for office people and then support people, sure. you know, water and sewer, they, they change their percentages in water and sewer only depending on where they are. Right. Understood. Um, I know like, um, speaking to some other places that do cross departmental charging, they keep daily timesheets because they look at that. So, and I know we do it every two weeks. And I know if I had to do it every two weeks, it would be very hard to, to get an accurate number. So um, it would be interesting to see what that, that looks like on a daily basis so that you have that. So like for, for example, Sabrina's timesheet, when she does her two-week timesheet, she has a percentage. I'm trying to remember her percentage, but she's got a percentage in, in department 10. She's got a percentage in 30. She's got a department 60 percentage in 40 percentage in 50 mm -hmm. um, based off of what happened in those two weeks. And it changes, mm -hmm. you know, from paycheck to paycheck where it's allocated. Right. So, um, and I mean, I guess that's the question is how does she keep track of that within the two weeks? Is it on her calendar or does she do, we, we don't do daily timesheets. Um, I've taught all my people, you write down in your, in your calendar, mm -hmm. what you do. And then when you do your timesheet, some people do it daily. Mm -hmm. um, I write all mine down, do my timesheet down to two weeks. I've got mine and I'm, I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. uh, the water and sewer guys, it's easier because right. that's where they are. Right. Um, public works guys, it's, it's a little bit easier for them because they're either streets, parks, and if they're doing water or sewer, then their time goes there. Mm -hmm. um, I would never recommend taking public works time out of water and sewer because they directly affect the operation and the delivery of water and sewer. Is it, may I Not delivery have sewer. a question? You know what I mean? Sure, Mr. Mayor. I, I think at some time in the, in the past, somebody came to, they were, everybody was working on the general front and the town went broke. We knew that. And, um, it's, and it, it get, everybody's being paid out of this thing as they could. And then somebody said, well, we ought to really assign some of this time over here because he's really working over here. It's it, it just something that Jim Hoover didn't come up with in the last administration. It was out of necessity. We want to know where, uh, well, he's spending that much time over here. He, that, <clears throat> that ought to support his effort. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, it came to that uh, because there were, everybody was just out of a pot. And, uh, you know, we set up, <clears throat> excuse me. We, uh, I'm sorry, I got a little... <clears throat> Uh, just the um, uh, it's it's uh, following stuff, but um, it, it did, we didn't pull this out of the hat, mm -hmm. and, and Jim Hoover didn't pull it, our accountants didn't pull it out. It, it came to this resolution somewhere. Or somebody said, "Well, well, they're actually spending all their time over there, mm -hmm. but that that should support that effort because there was a time when it all just came out of one pot." That, and uh, at, uh, you can go back in the history 25 years ago when the town was broken and, and uh, good old boys run it and they kind of, uh, um, you know, where they could get the money in a small town. And uh, that, that's, that's one reason mm -hmm. it's here. Now, if, this, if you want to go back the other way and, and start pulling it out of the pot, but mm -hmm. we, it, we set up something about eight years ago, nine years ago, maybe, I think it was before Commissioner um, Ritz was on the board, but we, I asked, uh, Dave Haller said, what, what would, do we, would you like to see done here? And he said, well, well, we keep pulling money out for, 
uh, vehicles and we keep pulling money out for paving. Well, I said, well, let's let's take it to the board that we'll present something where automatically every year you put so much here and you put so here. Our vehicles were 20 and 30 years old. They're unsafe. And <clears throat> I know they may look flashy, but if, if the vehicle you have is going to be replaced, you want to buy something that's in good shape. You don't go buy something that's worse. And, and they went to the market. Uh, most of them don't have, um, you know, they have roll up windows. They don't have air conditioning. Some of them do, but um, we really need to replace our, our stock of cars and vehicles. Bad. They were unsafe. And, and, uh, and we get a lot of pressure from uh, EPA on, on uh, the emissions of them. But we, it came to that somewhere in the past where they said this was a good system. And, and yes, everything's more expensive. Costs are going up. We see it all the time and all the time. And, and maybe Mr. Davis, you're right. We, we stop all these grants that have saved us all this money that we don't have the 50-50. The but, it, you know, 50 cents on a dollar for things we really need, like the Paul Street and, and, and things we're doing there is, 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 is good. And I, well, first of all, I didn't say stop all the grants. I stop the grants. There's a difference of what we need and what we would like. I know. So maybe stop all the we would like to have and continue with all what we need to have. Well, that's what I was saying there. Okay. I'm sorry if you misunderstood no, what I was it, saying. That, that works out well, but we need a new pool. We need, we need a dog park. We need things like that. But it, it, it's just something that came about that um, when you were discussing this, it, how do we get to this point? We're so crazy that we now we just want to pull everything out of the general fund. Well, that's where it started 30 years ago with the town. Um, allocate your time to it if you're spending your time on that then that's where that source has got to produce some revenue and that and that's why it's called an enterprise fund well i don't think the commissioner said pull everything out of the general fund it was maybe we just need to tweak it a little bit that's no, okay I'll be you know maybe no you know not always everything you do the first time is exactly right and you got to come back and you got to tweak your lineup a little bit and say hey i don't want to get rid of the whole team i just want to you know, maybe get a, a utility infielder. Absolutely. Okay, can you, you know. do that in in October? August. It sounds like we could do it in August, maybe. July. Yeah. Maybe July, according to the town manager. So that's what I got to uh, out of that equation. Um, what Miss, uh, what Commissioner Bowman Pollitt was saying. Uh, I liken it to prior discussions that we had um, for many things when we were looking at items. It was always black and white, black and white, you know, with this, this elusive gray area. And I think this, that is a perfect example of that gray area. You know, it's just a different way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And I, and I think my point, Mr. Mayor, is <clears throat> if the general funds years ago did go broke and we were looking for, you know, uh, accurately showing where people spent their time, that, that makes sense. And, and it worked for a while, but now we have a, a bankrupt waterfront. So, so like we, we were like this and now we're like this. So it's like, what can we do? It's this balancing act. And where is the line of how much, like if we charge all the way down to, I need a pen for somebody in sewer to write with, is that getting charged to water and sewer? Like how far does that line go? And does it need to go that far? I don't think, I don't know. Maybe there's guidelines on that, but that's something I think is a gray area. Okay, so um, help me out here. It appears then we're not voting this evening to approve the budget. So you either don't approve it tonight or you approve it on July 12th. And my concern is having it ready by July 12th, because if you're going to take, if you're going to, you, we're going to have to revamp or not revamp, but redo the not water, but June water. It's June 12th. June 12th. June, what did I say? July. So, okay. only... so if you, if you don't, um, we have to fix the water because you're going to change all your numbers in water. We're going to have to change sewer because we're changing numbers in sewer. And then we're going to have monies to change in the general fund. Then you're going to have to change your fund to transfers because that's going to change because you only have eighty nine thousand dollars that was not allocated for in your general fund. So 
that you're going to lose that money in fund two that was going to your stormwater management, stormwater management and some other things, um, paving, upgrading your parking meters. Um, so you're going to have to lose that money that there's not going to be money for that. So we have to then change all of that. And I don't know that we will have that ready by July 12th. You mean, is that June? June 12th. I keep saying July. And this is the, vacation. you're specifically talking about the, the 89,000 falls under the capital projects budget. Okay. So when you change your expenses in the general fund, because the revenues estimated it's set, you take your expenses in your general fund, you subtract the two, that's the money you have left over to go to fund two. So if you're going to add your general expenses more, you're going to have more expenses, that's going to reduce the amount that you have available to move to fund two. Wait, run that by me again. You, you said the revenues are, are what? Revenues are estimated. Well, estimated. we have a rest, uh, ugh, revenue set um, based off your, um, your constant yield tax rate, your um, county tax equity, um, your property taxes. Well, I said property tax. Your other generated revenues at, and I don't have the number off the top of my head, whatever your revenues are. And then you take your general fund expenses. Yes. You subtract the two. That's your money left over. And that goes to your fund two projects. So, so if you, I, I, not to interrupt, but I'm, but I'm going to, I thought the general fund revenues are balanced. Yeah, they are at the end with your transfer. So that's all part. Right. So, okay. so you take your revenues, you add your expenses plus your fund to transfer and they balance out. They have to equal zero. So you're saying we can't tweak anything even in the revenues. We not in the revenues, but, but if we, in your expenses, you can. So we, if we make any changes there, but and we that's going to that's gonna alter the difference. And then that, that's going to alter the capital yes. improvement. So okay. for, so for example, if, if, if five or whatever amount is moved from the water department to the, to a general department, um, department to a general fund department you would have 10,000 say examples 10,000 you would have 10,000 left less to transfer from fund one to fund two because you you've taken on additional expense in in the general fund mm -hmm. that's the flip side of it and and reducing the expenses in the water or the sewer the flip side of that is you increase the amount in the general fund thus reducing the transfer Right. 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 So right now we're estimating about 2.181 million in revenue in your general fund. Your um, your expenses are estimated at your expenses before your budget transfer is. Um, you don't need to do that. Oh, my mic's not even on. Can anybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, <clears throat> good. So, um, so your general fund expenses are, my computer's very slow right now. Your budget uh, expenses or your general fund expenses before your, your capital fund transfers, uh, 2,092,267. So the difference between your revenues and expenses is 89,229. Those are your fund to transfers. Of that, 35,000 was going to stormwater. So you had the money to pay for your stormwater pro or stormwater requirements for this fiscal year. Um, that was the majority of the transfer. Um, 28,000 was going towards the parking meters to be upgraded. We're trying to get a grant um, because they can't be fixed when, and we know of one that's not working. Um, and then the remainder was pretty much going to paving. So that would have to change. And, and that's why I'm saying it's, it's, it's difficult to turn it around in a week because there's so many variables. I guess another concern that I have though, if we don't, if we do, Obviously, it's that week. Okay, so can we do it in July or August? You know, there's MML coming up. There's summer vacations. Or, or is this is this a feasible endeavor to? Can it happen? I guess my recommend. I I don't know what my recommendation is. Honestly, um, 
I don't know. Um, I just, I just think that the budget should be approved and then you guys make modifications once we get the answer. But I don't know if that's something that you guys are willing to do. I'm not in your position. I provide you the information. I give you my opinion and what we've, you know, Cole and I have, have known for the years doing the budget. Ultimately, we do what the mayor and the board instruct us to do. Um, this is your decision. Understood. Um, just time's getting short. It is. Mm -hmm. Are we? Are... Mm -hmm. I guess. I guess the next thing to do then would be to. Okay, here's a question. Hypothetically speaking, if we do not pass this this evening, what happens to the next agenda item? Can that still be passed, the salary uh, chart and potential COLA increase, or do you have to delay that as well? It can be passed, but essentially it doesn't go in effect because you don't have an adopted budget. No, is that true? Oh, let's yeah. say we don't have an adopted budget this evening. No, okay, never take that back. So, so there will, okay. Scheduling wise, per the charter, we have until June 27th. However, it sounds like it's going to be an impossible endeavor for all parties involved to get a modified budget together for us to even consider before that date. And we can't change the charter on a whim because it would require public notification, agenda item, public notice, and all that and it's, stuff. It's, it's state law also. That July 1st begins mm -hmm. your fiscal year. Okay. So, um, okay. I was just curious as to how that would affect the next item. I, I guess then if no, if no one has anything else, then I guess we need to see if anyone would be willing to make a motion to approve the town budget this evening as presented. So move. Do I hear a second? I'll second so we can take a vote. Or Thank you. If we have any more discussion. The motion was made by Commissioner Sweeney, seconded by Commissioner Davis. Any further discussion on the matter? Yeah, just, just real quick. I, I don't think we're going to, if we vote against it tonight we're still going to be voting against it next week because we don't have any other information that that i'm willing to vote in favor of it as long as we continue this process of the discussion tonight and the information that commissioner bowman pilot brought to us to see if we can can uh, you know improve you know the finances in the in the water I, I feel we, so too. If you can have all the information back by July or August. So what we could do is add, because I actually had July light. Um, <laughs> July's fine. We could uh, add a um, a discussion item related to um, fiscal year twenty four budget, and then you could take an action item in August. Or we could do an action. We could do it as an action and discussion item in July, which gives you then wiggle room to get it done in August, if that makes sense. I'm going to give you time too because you got to call the auditors. You got to go to Walkersville to see what they're doing. You got to do. And I'm going to reach out to MML also because um, they do offer budgeting classes at MML, and I'm going to ask them also. Commissioner Bowman Pollitt, hate to put you on the spot, but I just want to make sure. Um, are you satisfied then with this approach? Does that uh, help to alleviate the concerns that you had that we can look at this in the near future? I'm very hesitant, but if we do our due diligence and we come back because I don't want to rush the process, I don't want to put extra stress on the staff. However, if I have commissioners who are telling me that they're going to 
with your efforts in this area and that we can really hash it out and take a deep look, then, then I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm with you, you know, um, I don't want to drop it. We're also down one commissioner this evening, evening, this evening too. So, you know, just throwing it out there, a potential scenario where this, um, mm -hmm. budget were to be voted upon with a two, two vote, it fails. We have no other chance to meet before June 27th per the charter. Therefore, the budget as proposed is our budget. That's where that's a real hang up for me then too. So and due to the timeline, I understand the, the constraints. So if this is something we can revisit August or July, whenever it may be, I I think that's satisfactory. Yeah, otherwise our hands are, are tied. But thank you for well, you can bring the auditors and stuff back. Can't they come here? We can always ask them. Um, if they're available at the July meeting, um, or well, they could, if not, we could have a special workshop on the whole thing, or they could zoom in and bring, you know, we could have a special workshop just for this item and have everybody here, have the auditors here, have anybody or have the attorney here, whoever we need to have to, to make sure we're going in the right direction and not going to jail. That's number one priority. Cause I don't think I Getting can take sued. that. Yeah. 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 So I could do, we could do right now, leave it as a discussion item in July. Um, and then I can always modify the agenda item um, with the permission of the uh, Commissioner O'Donnell and Mayor Briggs, if if I get some direct, because I don't know how, I don't know if it's done by resolution. I don't know if it's done by ordinance. I need to confer, but to be able to set it so you guys have some reassurance that it's on the agenda, that it's not going to be dropped. Um, We'll put it that way for now, and then we can always modify it. Okay. Um, right now, July is a light agenda. Good, because I'm going to be at the beach doing it by Zoom, and there's probably going to be a beer and cigar while I'm doing this, so <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> at least I'm being honest. I mean, with that being said, I, uh, we got the motion in second, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm done my discussion. Sorry. Can you, um, Commissioner Ritz, can you repeat who made the motion and who did the second, please? Yes, the motion was made by Commissioner Sweeney um, to approve the budget mm -hmm. and seconded by Commissioner Davis. Thank you. That was going by my memory. I didn't even write that down. So am, am I right? Did, did I get that right? Okay. All right, then. Uh, no other discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any against? Aye. 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 No one against. Um, the motion carries four to zero. With Commissioners Bowman Pollitt, Commissioner Davis, Commissioner Sweeney, and Commissioner Ritz voting for, with Commissioner O'Donnell absent. And again, Commissioner Bowman Pollitt, thank you for what you that information you got. You 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 spent obviously spent a lot of time on that, and and I appreciate that. And it was not to make town staff's life horrible. It was with the challenge of if you could come up with something, let's let's talk about it. And that's what I'm hoping to do. Is just and our phones have been ringing off the hook. Uh, you know, can't go anywhere. Grocery store being stopped, and you know, it's the people haven't forgot it, so we can't forget it. No, and I and yeah. I I don't find fault with anybody. Just like I said, when it came to the water rates, you know, I wish I'd had a heads up instead of it you know, eight o'clock the night of the meeting. I get that sometimes it happens that way. That's all I ask is if, if you know, if you can give staff the heads up, then we can be better prepared um, instead of trying to dig through our notes or dig through the code. Um, but we'll come back in July with maybe some direction. Thank you. All right, moving on for agenda item number six for consideration, the approval of ordinance 23-07 update to chapter 2.50.30 of the salary structure for FY24. Ms. Willits? Yeah, so this uh, ordinance was presented at the last uh, meeting. Uh, it's the same uh, section of code related to the employee salary chart 2.50.020. Um, um, I do have one strikeout that was not in the um, 
original ordinance from May. It was something that was brought to my attention. It was a contradiction to the employee handbook. Um, letter G, where it says only the town manager, the town accountant, and the town planner will be compensated via comp time for overtime hours worked. That's not correct. Our employee handbook does afford everybody salaried and non-salaried the ability to accrue comp time. So I wanted to fix that because it was that's not correct. Um, and then on page 44 is the um, salary chart with the mayor's proposed 4% COLA. Um, he had reached out to Amanda Hathaway, our HR consultant, to see what other municipalities and other agencies were offering for the COLA. Um, they were offering, most of them were offering between five and 7% COLA. Uh, the mayor opted for recommending a 4% COLA because the consumer price index, excuse me, was about 8.5%, the last that we talked to um, HR. I know it should probably change because that was back in February. Um, so this is a set, the salary structure changes only on the COLA. It does not um, take into consideration any mayor increase. Wait, say it again. So your salary chart, so it only changes by 4%, only the COLA, the salary chart itself. Because the merit increase is already built into it because the merit increases vary from employee from one percent to three percent and in in speaking with amanda <clears throat> sorry <laughs> yeah in speaking with amanda if you throw a seven percent coal seven percent increase across your chart it's going to throw your chart all out of whack and it's not going to stay consistent through at her recommendation we did this last year you only increase your chart based off the cola yes yes but in our budget yeah, that includes the actual everyone's cumulative merit increases Correct. because they're done in February Correct. before you do the budget yes. or when you start that process. Right. Okay. Thanks. So, should letter G it's, it's, start with the sentence "all comp time hours"? Like, include that sentence, or no? It's it's um that that's covered under your employee handbook. So it didn't need to be in this or then it doesn't need to be in the order. Okay. I was, I misunderstood. Yeah. So because it's in there, you're just correct. Removing it. Okay. And that was kind of, I don't know if it's my fault or whatever, but I, when I, I read that and looking for mm -hmm. budget deductions or savings, I happened to run into one of our employees and said, Hey, were you ever think about taking some comp time? He goes, well, we can take comp time. I go, well, not anymore because we just voted on something that said you can't and uh that's how we came across that because i, I was actually just looking at mm -hmm. some ways to save some some salaries and for some of our younger employees that, that don't get as much vacation time yep and things so that's where that came from so. right all right thanks so just, i'm sorry go ahead mr Obama, Paul. <clears throat> so just to clarify the merit base was already done in February. And that's correct. No. All right. So the performance or evaluations. So their performance evaluation rating rating period is February 1 to January 30th of each year. Mm -hmm. So we do uh, performance evaluations in February so that we know the mayor's recommendation is 4% COLA and then uh, one to three percent merit based off as you can see in letter a that outlines where you get who gets one two or three percent so that we know when we start planning the budget what the proposed salary will be it doesn't go into effect until the board approves it so no they have not received a merit come february is that your question yes okay Any other questions for town staff at this time? Hearing none, do I hear a motion then to approve? Get the number wrong here. Uh, ordinance twenty three dash oh seven, which is an update to chapter two point five zero point three zero, the uh, the salary structure for FY twenty four, which includes a four percent cost of living. Adjustment is that what the A stands for? 
Yes. Um, effective July 1st, 2023. I'm sorry, I have another question. Oh, sure. So we're only voting on the COLA. No, you're, vo you're voting on the salary chart and the COLA, yes. Right, the salary chart that has the 4% COLA, but not the merit base that's built. It's not, that's not built in. Right. We just approved the FY24 budget, which includes, has the assumption that we're gonna approve this chart mm -hmm. with everybody's yeah. applicable. I know, and that was one of the sticking points I had was that the 5% for inflation, is that when the 5% for inflation in water was just for COLA? Mm -hmm. It was for labor increase. 5% for labor increase for the next five years. That's what took into consideration. When we started this study, I'll choose my words carefully, um, the state of the country's economy was not as bad as it is right now and inflation wasn't at eight and a half percent. So assuming a 5% increase for the next five years was safe, mm -hmm. unfortunately, not mm -hmm. so much anymore. I mean, as we've seen the price increase, uh, you know, the board just voted on the pump station at the last meeting. It went up by over a million dollars. The clarifier's gone up exponentially. You can't prepare for that, unfortunately. Right. So I know that changes. I and it, and that study also took increase a small percent increase for materials, not what it actually is today, unfortunately. And one thing I want to point out too is. Um, under the water, um, especially the point out in the water department, the, the salary line is actually lower than it was the prior year mm -hmm. um, as we try to, you know, um, and that's, we had mentioned that in the, mm -hmm. when we had made the budget presentation, it's due to a staff mix mm -hmm. change. Um, so that's one thing I just wanted to point out also. And, and same right. thing with the sewer department. Right. And right. it, I mean, in, in a way, that's a, and a we good do, thing because we can roll it back into water. Um, but well, if that's we, a that's a direct effect to ha helping the water department and helping the sewer department. Mm -hmm. When we put the percentages together for all the different departments, we do the best we can as far as estimating where the um, you know where they should be. You're going to have certain employees. You can pick out certain employees and mm -hmm. see that they weren't quite exactly what we estimated. But then there's other employees that are that aren't quite the way we thought they were the other way right. when it's all said and done. And when we're done at the end of the fiscal year, we take a look and we, it all, we all need to be within the, a certain percentage of the budget for each of the departments and salaries is a big part of that. But these percentages that we've used in prior years has gotten us to where uh, and reflected accurately where we're at in the different departments, because when it's all said and done, that's where the budgets came in at. So mm -hmm. that's why we've used that. But just one thing to emphasize on the water and sewer for those particular line items, they do decrease this from the current fiscal year to the next fiscal year. Right. Right. But I think that's good, right? Because that's less expense that we're drawing from the water fund. Um, I, and, that, and that's just a separate point on its own. Yeah, I, I know this is going nowhere, but the fact that we're looking at higher than what was factored into the what the auditor proposed, it's concerning to me. I know there's absolutely nothing I can do about it right now because we've already passed the budget. So, and yeah, I mean, is it possible if somebody goes above the 5% that we can take that out of general fund just so that we for those who are asking, I mean, we don't have to answer that tonight, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's questions I'm going to get from residents. I think that's something we should save till July because if, um, mm -hmm. do you have a motion on the table, Commissioner Ritz? No, we didn't. Um, no, for this one. No. For this one. Okay, then this is fine. Um, I'm sorry. So, thank you. I wasn't okay. So, uh, Commissioner Bowen Pollard has no further questions. Did anyone else have anything else to add? 
Okay. Um, therefore, do I hear a motion? Let me restate it just for to make sure. Uh, motion to approve ordinance 2307, 23-07, update to chapter 2.50.30, which is the salary structure for fiscal year 24, which includes a 4% COLA, effective date of July 1st, 2023. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Okay, do I hear a second? I'll second. Motion's been made by Commissioner Davis and seconded by Commissioner Sweeney. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone against? Isn't this a pickle? If it's the four percent cola, then I. Thank you, Commissioner Bowman Pilot. Um, the vote. The motion carries four to zero with Commissioners Bowman Pollitt, Commissioner Davis, Commissioner Sweeney, Commissioner Ritz voting for, Commissioner O'Donnell not present. And it appears that we're at the end of our meeting to go over the agenda mm -hmm. for the July 10th meeting. Right. And just for the record, in case anyone's wondering, months ago, we made the decision, I believe the mayor brought it to our attention, it was his request to move the meeting to July 10th. And then we further enacted a ordinance, I believe, because it had something to do with the, the way it, the holiday fell. So that's why we're having our meeting on July 10th. Correct. Your, um, an ordinance came before you that basically said, yes, um, that any time a town meeting falls on a holiday, if the first Monday of each month, if it's a holiday, the meetings move to the second Monday. And the board voted to approve that. So we didn't have to keep switching them and exactly. we could stay consistent. In case anyone out there was wondering, I thought I'd throw that out there because it was like a little different than our normal date. All right, so Ms. Willits, um, agenda items Yes. For the next meeting. Uh, for I have one consent item, which would be the filing of the 2022 Planning Commission report. And then agenda item number one will be discussion related to the fiscal year 2024 budget and the allocation of salaries. Number two, approval of Federal Stones Public Works Agreement and authorize mayor to sign the agreement on behalf of town for consideration. Number three, approval of rules of procedure for the Board of Commissioners for consideration. This is just a little snippet. Pursuant to Article 2, Section 5 of the Charter, these rules of procedures are adopted as a guide to assist commissioners in the orderly and efficient conduct of all matters that come before them. Basically, it's the, uh, the setting of agenda items, the uh, rules governing public hearings, and just basically the operations of a meeting. This was prepared by um, the town attorney at, I believe it was Commissioner O'Donnell's request and somebody else's request on, I think it was your request on how to add agenda items to the agenda when it's oh. does not happen at a meeting. It's been sitting on the back burner for several months. I didn't real recognize it when you, yes. okay. I thought maybe it's somebody was being unruly up here. It's not conduct like, well, you can't talk to you and you can't do this. <laughs> That's not what it is at all. Um, number four, approval of resolution 2023-05-R, authorizing Mayor Briggs and town manager to file an application for federal assistance with the USDA Rural, rural Development for consideration. That's for a grant that Maddie's working on. And there were no administrative business items. No, and that's all I have. Did yeah there is something i can't remember i believe commissioner bowman pilot might
wasn't there something going on um, regarding the day after school daycare? Oh, yes. Wasn't that going to happen in July? Oh, in July, the daycare. Yeah. Can we put that on there? Yeah. How did, what, well, remind us again, what, what was, um, it's jumping out at me kind of, and I can't yeah, quite grasp yeah, it. So I received an email from Frederick County Public Schools, um, early childhood education supervisor, director, she's up there, um, who was looking for ways to problem solve to increase pre-K enrollment in Emmonsburg, because we do have two classrooms in the northern end of the county. And as of right now, we're busing kids in from as far away as Urbana. And when we're fine, when she dug into why are we not filling those seats here in Emmitsburg, because we do have kids who could benefit from those seats, it came back to there wasn't enough adequate daycare options here in town so that parents could make use of those pre-K seats. Um, and she just, she actually has a lot of really good ideas and different resources that she liked to present to the town um, as far as ways that different grants. She said there's a lot of grants out there that she just is unable to tap into it because of space, of space. But if there, we were able to find space, that there, it's possible that we can get daycare back up in here. But there's a lot. There was a lot to it. I'm saying I'm bungling it compared to how she speaks to it. As she speaks to it very eloquently, so she just wanted to be able to come to the commissioners and present some of those ideas for us to consider looking ahead. Okay, I, it sounds to me that that might be an administrative business item for for discussion and then uh, further. Um to build upon that further, um, yeah. potentially even reaching out to town staff. I'm sure he's on the ground. I'm sorry, sir. I, I can't hear him. I think I think he said he oh, waited to oh, hear okay. finished. He wanted to. Yeah, touch. I think that was all I. That okay, was thank you. The YMCA um, program stopped here because they didn't have enough children. Mm -hmm. but they were three or four years old because my granddaughter went to mm -hmm. this program here. Mm -hmm. And they, they went here a half a day mm -hmm. to this program. Then they went to the, they walked them over to the school for mm -hmm. the pre-K. So um, I don't understand why the YMCA had left because mm -hmm. they were busing people here, mm -hmm. but we don't have daycare here. So we, the YMCA program um, doesn't cost a lot of money and it's free to, to uh, the people who can't afford childcare. So. I think she wanted to address all of that. Um, she, she had a lot of different ideas to pull from. Um, like I said, she summarizes it better. Um, and after she was throwing out all the, she wanted to problem solve with us is what it comes down to. And I said, I, I think it should be something that's brought so that we can hear it from you so that I don't misrepresent her ideas. So then as a potentially administrative business item, I wrote down presentation of after school care for Emmitsburg. I don't know if I should be more descriptive or if you have any suggestions, Ms. Willis. Uh, no, that would be fine. Presentation of, what did you say? After school. Um, daycare, daycare options. Presentation of daycare options for Emmitsburg residents children presentation daycare options just leave it at that yeah that that works um i mean commissioner sweeney you're absolutely correct the easiest option would be to bring head start back downstairs um because there's already the facility there's already a kitchen there's already a playground they have everything they need down there um obviously that would be the easiest answer but i don't know whatever happened um i don't know what happened you know it'd be nice to get in touch with somebody i, don't, I know Maybe his wife's uh, administrator down at Head Start. And it could be funding, and it sounds like could this be. is what the uh, they want to present to us and give us all these options. So, yeah, I think it's real important. Yeah, and, and they meet. I'm sorry. Go ahead. They meet in September or, or August, where they have a, a round table for the YMCA program with all what what uh, 
Lions Club, we have two members who go to that mm -hmm. um, because we do all their vision screenings and stuff for the children. Mm -hmm. um, I used to go to them, but we have two representatives to go. Mm -hmm. Too busy. <laughs> but um, it'd be nice for them. I'll have them ask why did they pulled it out from up here when they mm -hmm. were up here for so long. They were up for, for at least 10 years. And I know the... Um... Emmitsburg, the principal of Emmitsburg Elementary could shed some light on it too. She spoke briefly, I think, whatever, a couple of meetings ago. Yeah, and that's what jogged my memory because I ran into her right there at the end of school. And I believe she stated that she would like to attend that meeting. She can't physically be here, but she would, if, if given the option, she would she would call in via Zoom. Zoom so, in. Yes, yeah. because I, I think their concern is if, the fact that we have two pre-Ks up north is huge. We did, Trying to get support on the northern end of the county has historically been very difficult in FCPS. So they don't want to lose those two classrooms because of not being able to fill those seats. So, <clears throat> and since Leslie actually lives here in Emmitsburg, she sees the need too. So she's like, well, it, the kids are there. Let's let's see how we can make it happen so we can keep pre-K as an option on the northern end of the county. Thank you for mm -hmm. remembering all that for us. Actually, you remembered, but thank you. Um, <laughs> did anyone have anything else to add to the agenda then? There, okay, do, then do I hear a motion to approve? We're just going to have a special meeting in July for the other one. No, it's on the agenda. It was number one on the agenda number item, the from, agenda. unless I wrote that down wrong. I have FY24 budget oh, okay. and uh, allocation of salaries. Yeah. Yeah, I'd put salaries down. I didn't write the budget down. But, uh, okay, I misread it. A motion to yeah. approve the agenda for July 10th, 2023 as modified then? So moved. Motion's been made by Commissioner Davis. Do I hear a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Bowman Pollitt. Any other Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 None against, no. Uh, meeting motion motion carries four to zero. Um, Commissioner O'Donnell, not present. Any other business then? I just have, do we know the date of our August meeting yet? Has that been determined? We voted at the last meeting. Did we? Mm -hmm. Totally forgot. And it was. Dun, dun, dun. August. 21st. That's right. It was 21st. Very late. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Sorry, brain spasm. Okay, August 21st. All right. Then do I hear a motion to adjourn? Before that, just one thing. Councilman, I just want to thank you for the information you've been getting out to us. I've received more information from what's going on at the County Council in your short term than I did in the previous four years with the last. Is everybody on his, the mailing list and gets the- Yes, thank you. Yeah. I concur. Thank you so much for that. So. Are you finished, Commissioner Davis? Yeah. <laughs> I moved to the- is that seconded then? Please. Second. Second. Motion has been made by Commissioner Sweeney, seconded by Commissioner Bowman Pollitt. Meeting is adjourned at 929. Thank you.